they will tell you that these people, the, the Meru, the Kisis, I mean the Kikuyu, the Kamba, they call them Avantovaminto, meaning our people. That's what the elders will tell you when uh, we are talking about uh, these communities. Specifically about the Kusi again, it is known that small groups of families that eventually became to be the current Busi people are settled in the Kano Plains by the 16th century. We may say that it was in this area in the Kano Plains where the GC really evolved as a district. This is the time when they parted away with the with the with the with the, with the, with the, Rogori, the Maragori. And at this time, I think we can say that the Gusi now are developed into a distinct group around this time, the 16th century. And we may say that at this time, it is said that at this place, in the Kano Plains, the sons of Mugusi. These are the real, the core sons, the core founders, Mosi, says to be the, the real originator of the Gusi. And probably this guy never never was at at at, at kind of place, probably around the Sumu area. When these sons moved, maybe they didn't move their father, yeah, maybe not, 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 not arrived. So the Mosi sons. And these are the original signs of the homogus, the original signs, the Mosueta, Mochorua, Mobasi, Mobisero, and Monjare. These were the signs which were settled at the the Kano, the Kano Prince. It was these signs of the original signs of Omoxi which eventually gave rise to the original Gusi clans, known as Abagetutu. Abagetutu belonged to Mosueta. Abanyaribari <coughs> belonged to Mosueta. Abagirango belonged to Mochorwa. Ababasi belonged to Mobasi. Abamachoke also belongs to uh, Mosweta and Abanchari. Here we don't see the Abagisero. Probably the Abagisero at this time they were either became part of the uh, Abagetutu through assimilation. So those are really the fundamental when you talk about the Kisi, the, the origin and the history of the Kisi, those are the core founders and this is a highly simplified fashion but for clarity and for people to get to understand these people so that's one of the things i wanted to share with you briefly talking about the origin of these people known as the abagusi <laughs> professor jim pondaga also presented the same in a more articulated manner Linking it with the law. For more than, and I've said this, you know, we have got to spell this idea that, and you did it quite well, Professor Dege, that um, the African people were developed exclusively. They are very exclusive, the is developing exclusively, the, the, the law is here. No. There were, there were a lot of inclusiveness. A lot of interactions, a lot of intermarriages, a lot of trade. And I believe that's where we have not really emphasized when we talk about the history of Kenya. Uh, Professor Muriwaki did it in his book. The people who were known as the Kikuyu, for instance, as much as they had Pantu, they have got a lot of non Pantu blood in them. The same applies to all other, the Meru, you know. 
What happened to the indigenous groups who were found in these places when, when our ancestors moved here? There were people who were here when our ancestors found here. So the point we are going to say that this issue of tri tribalism that is neither here or there, in fact, is a very, a very simplistic way of looking at ourselves. When we talk about, oh, we are the kisses, oh, we are the good, you know. If you try, each one of you, if you try to trace your origin, if you, you, your, your grandfather has arrived and you, you go and ask him and your grandmother, they go back, you find that there's an element which came from another community. And that's why I believe the issue of tribes is a colonial creation. It was a creation of the colonialists to basically divide and control us. I wonder whether it is as much as we are talking about the Bushi, whether 500 years ago there were people who knew themselves by the name Umo Bushi or Kikuyu or whatever. The name Karajin, for instance, if you talk to the historian, there's nothing like Karajin. It's just something which somebody that the poet came up with. And now they, we use it. They use it to be, you know, exclusive. And we have got to emphasize that one to our youth and for the, for the betterment of our country. Let me talk very briefly about the socio-cultural organization of the Wusi. And I think it is a very important part of this book, as I have said, on the issue of demography. Basically, the Gusi, their socio-cultural perspectives were based on patrilineal principles. Patrilineal principles meaning that you trace your ancestry on the male side. Basically, you trace your ancestry to the male side of the family. In terms of social organization, 